Okay, let's talk about instantaneous velocity. We saw average velocity, which was the change in our position over the change in our time, but what if I want the instantaneous velocity? I don't wanna know my average speed over some time interval. I wanna know my exact speed at some very particular time. So we've been looking at some position versus time graphs, and they were, uh, they were, consi they were composed of straight line segments. But what if that's not the case? What if that's not the case, as it almost never is in the real world? So I have a position versus time graph here. I can label this the horizontal axis our time and the vertical axis our position. What if my graph looks something like this? So it's got a little a little wave to it. It's a con it's a nice smooth wave. So this is not composed of straight line segments, and so I don't have a uh, I don't have a constant velocity over any interval of time. My position is always changing at a different rate. And so just to go quickly over the concept of average velocity as it pertains to these graphs, if I wanted the average velocity from this point to this point, well, we know that the average velocity, this is the same thing, this is the same thing as our second position minus our first position divided by however much time passed. And so if we look at this, we can see that this is the second time point, and this is the first time point. And we can do the same thing with our position. It's the first position, and at our second time, we have the second position of x2. And so if we could get the average velocity. Now, if you're familiar with the concept of slope, if you have a good grasp on that, you'll recognize this as just the slope. The x's are our outputs in this case. So this is just the change in output over change in input. That's exactly the slope. So if we were to draw a straight line between these two points, so maybe from here to here, our average velocity is just the slope of this green line here. All right, but that wasn't really, that's not instantaneous velocity. It's just an average over some time interval. So let's get rid of these. Let's say, what if I ask you about the instantaneous velocity right here? So I'm not interested in my average over some time interval. I want to know my exact velocity right at this point, right at that point. Well, we can use the average velocity to estimate it we could take a smaller time interval. So let's use, let's see, let's use the, let's just use red. So we could take the time interval from here to here, and that would give us some new time points and some different position points than we had for the first estimate, all right? Roughly, the, the second position here is gonna be very similar. And so we could draw the line through these two, and that's gonna get us really close to the instantaneous rate of change, but it's not exact, it's a little bit off. And so if that estimate doesn't work for whatever situation we're in, then we can just make another estimate. So we'll get rid of those. And so say, okay, let's shrink our interval even smaller. So let's take the time interval, maybe from here to right there, and that'll get us even closer. And so we can just repeat this process and we can evaluate the average time over smaller and smaller intervals. But we want the instantaneous. So what if there was a way, so let's take this smallest interval here. So we, we found our average velocity was delta x over delta t. And so that's over that little gray interval. But what if there was a way to go, uh, let's say to infinity. So I have this little, this little time interval that I'm taking my average velocity over. So I say I go to infinity, I mean this piece here, what if we could just shrink that to zero around our point that we're interested in? So what if we could take this time interval and find its limit as the time interval goes to zero? What is that? Well, if you aren't already talking about derivatives in your calculus class, or maybe you've talked about them in the past, you'll recognize this as the derivative of x with respect to t. Now, I don't want to get too far into the weeds of the derivative. I want to keep this in the physical application, but I'll post some, some videos 
um, that do a really great job of explaining exactly what this derivative is. But this is essentially the concept. It is the limit of estimates as your interval here gets smaller and smaller and smaller, as in fact the interval tends towards zero. All right. So it's good to see this in a graph, but let's do a actual, um, an actual example with a function. So let's go down here. So let's say I give you the position function of some particle, some, some thing moving, some particle moving. And I say its position is given by some constant b times t plus a constant c times t cubed. Say, all right. And let's say I give you the value of these constants. Let's say that I tell you that the constant b is 2.5 meters per second. And then the constant c, and this is just given information, is 0.74 meters per second cubed. OK. And we want to know, let's see, let's say we want to know the instantaneous velocity, the instantaneous velocity at exactly two seconds, at time equal to two seconds. So first off, let's do what we did to start. Let's estimate the instantaneous velocity here by making smaller and smaller intervals. So let's start with the interval, uh, what color should we use? We'll use green. Let's start with the interval from, so we want to find the average velocity from one second to three seconds. So two is in the middle there, and we're going to find the average velocity. Well, I'm going to scoot to the left a little bit. I might run out of room. V bar, we know, is delta x over delta t. And the delta x is the second position minus the first position. And the delta t is the second time minus the first time. Minus the first time. But what is our second time? Well, our function of position, or our position function here, rather, is given here. And we want the second position. So we're going to plug in the second time. So I'm going to, I'm going to also plug in my constants. So my b was 2.5. So we'll mark this with parentheses. So it's 2.5 times my second time, 3, plus my constant c, 0.74, times my time, my second time, cubed. But then we have to subtract the first time. So we're going to subtract and then just plug in the first time. Well, the first time was just 1. So we have our constant b times 1 plus our constant c times 1 cubed. And then we have to divide all this by our change in time. Well, if we went from 1 second to 3 seconds, that's a change in 2 seconds. We'll just, we'll just go ahead and write it, 3 minus 1. And what does this give us? Well, this gives us an average velocity. We can just evaluate this in the calculator, type these numbers in, and we get an average velocity of 12.12 meters per second over that interval. OK, so we want a better estimate. So let's get a smaller interval. Uh, move this up. Oop, move this up just a tad. Let's get a smaller interval. So let's say I want the instantaneous velocity, or excuse me, the average velocity. And I want to estimate at 2 by taking the smaller interval v bar from 1.5 seconds to 2.5 seconds. So two's in the middle, smaller time interval. Well, this is gonna be, make sure I don't run out of room this time. This is gonna be our second position. So that means I'm gonna plug in my second time into my position function. So that'll be my constant B times my second time. Now, that just happened to be the same number. Remember, this is the constant B and this is our second time right here. So then plus our constant c times our second time cubed. And then minus our first time. So I'm just going to use the same formula and plug in 1.5 seconds. So the constant b times 1.5 plus the constant c times 1.5 cubed. 
and this is going to be, well, the change from 1.5 seconds to 2 seconds to 2.5 seconds is just 1 second, so it's actually not going to change anything here. So what is our average velocity in this case? Well, in this case, our v bar, our average velocity, we just type this into a calculator and evaluate it. What do we get? We get 11.565 meters per second. So that's our average velocity there. And then we can keep going. We'll do one more interval. But now I, I encourage you to try this. So you try out the interval. Let's get v bar from, let's say, 1.95 seconds to 2.05 seconds, an even smaller time interval. So I encourage you to try this one out and see what you get. Maybe pause and think about that. So what we should get from here is 11.3815 meters per second. And so what we are hoping is that these estimates are getting closer and closer to the value of our instantaneous velocity at time equal to two seconds. So now let's check. Let's bring our formula with us. So maybe bring that down here. Now we said that the velocity is going to be the derivative of x with respect to t. So I'm going to take the derivative here. And again, I'll post, some, um, I'll post some links at the bottom to some videos that do a really good job of really describing mathematically in depth what this derivative is and the different rules and such. But I'm going to use a constant rule and a power rule here to take this derivative, and that's going to be b plus 3c t squared. And I want to know what this is at 2. So I'm going to evaluate my instantaneous velocity at 2 seconds. So at 2 seconds... So my b is 2.5, and I have plus 3 times c times t squared, so times 2 squared. And what does that give me? Well, that gives me 11.38 exactly. And so you can see that this estimate right here was pretty close. And all of our estimates, we went from 12.2, if I fit it in the same screen, we went from 12.12 to 11.565 to 11.3815, and then our actual instantaneous velocity was 11.38. So the estimates were getting closer and closer to our actual value.